Welcome friends to the session of uh, questionnaire and form design. In the last session we just finished with uh, scale development process uh, where I explained ki what is the role of a scale, how scale is important and uh, uh, how should you develop a scale right. So, in connection to the scale development uh, in research in social science research uh, we we do not have an basically we do not do it in a lab. So, what we do is we, cal we uh, collect data from the public or the, uh, the respondent right. So, to how do you collect the data in such a manner that there should be very little error in it is an important question. Questionnaire design uh, I always say in any class is one of the most important uh, part of a research uh, process in uh, the social science uh, uh, gambit. So, what exactly and why is it say I am saying it is important? Because you see in uh, suppose you do not, if you have a questionnaire, a questionnaire says something where you try to collect all the uh, answers to your uh, questions that you have in mind as a researcher right. So, suppose you are uh, you have certain objectives ok objectives. So, when you have the what are the objectives you have in mind let us say 1, 2, 3 three objectives you have in mind. Now, to get the answer to these objectives you are asking the questions right. So, now the questions could be asked in different way. If you are not very serious in designing a questionnaire then you might be sometimes measuring 1 and 2, but you might have missed 3. You do not ask the questions pertaining to the objective 3 or you ask in a way which is very complicated right. It is not very clear to the public or the respondent he is not understanding it or it could be like you know uh, uh, you have asked beyond 1, 2, 3 you have asked something you know more questions which could have been a fourth or fifth objective, but this fourth and fifth objective are not part of your basic research study. So, one has to be careful because everybody uh, has a this is a human habit that we love our child you know we love our basic ideas we feel that is it is very good and very uh, everything is very important, but it is not so you have to look at from a different uh, point of view from a dis different perspective right. Suppose there is a this is where you should be your question should be your objective should be you know there has to be a balance you cannot you cannot cross these boundaries right you cannot cross these boundaries your questionnaire cannot be given an extra uh, space you have to stay within this boundary only right. Because this is if you start doing it then there could be numerous questions which can be added up they might be related to your subject, but that is not exactly your objective of the research. So, please be careful do not love your idea so much that you get into a trap this is very important. Now, <coughs> a questionnaire is a structured technique for data collection that consists of series of questions written or verbal that a respondent answers ok. Let me tell you in most of the questionnaires that I have developed till now and on different research areas it has been never possible for me to develop a question questionnaire correctly on the first or second uh, attempt. I have even gone to an uh, you know uh, maximum of I can think is 17 times that I have built up a questionnaire right. So, either you can say I was not very perfect at the first time. So, I do not want to be also nobody can be perfect on the very first hand. So, every time you do it you show it to somebody you try you see there is a there is a lacuna there is a weakness in the questionnaire right. Because once you have designed the questionnaire once you have collected the data from the respondents in the market then the point is you cannot go back there is no possibility for you to again redo or revisit the process. So, it has to be done only once. So, when it has to be done once please be extremely extremely careful that you do not give away a very poor questionnaire ok. <coughs> A questionnaire is a formalized set of questions for obtaining the information right. Now, the objectives now what are his objectives his thinking correct. So, according to the objectives how should he design his questionnaire right. It must translate the information needed into a set set of specific questions that the respondents can and will answer two things he should be able to answer. It is not that if you ask me about let us say something about uh, biotechnology I might not be able to answer right or if you ask me something on let us say um, you know on some kind of a space research I might not be able to answer you right. So, there are two things one is can he answer second is 
If you ask me about my personal very sensitive information, will I answer you? I might not. So, how do you unearth a personal information? There is a style for it, there you have to use your logic, your brain for it, right? Ki how do I ask him the question so that he will be the respondent will be ready to uh, you, know, uh, um, uh, you know divulge or disseminate the information or uh, you know uh, uh, give, give me the answer, ok. A questionnaire must please again it is must uplift, motivate and encourage the respondent to become involved in the interview to cooperate and to complete the interview. Most of the respondents, uh, most of the questionnaires I see sometimes I feel they are so boring, so dull and sometimes uh, they are so you know um, uh, difficult to understand that I am not interested even looking at the questionnaire. See I, I, you, nobody you cannot force a respondent to fill up right, it is not like there is no legal binding right. So, uh, I may not answer you right. So, you have to have you have to make me get excited and encouraged to answer. It should be minimizing the response error. So, the response error should be minimum, it should, there should not be too much of a response error, right. So, response error we have already discussed earlier in our classes, right. So, what are the process? Let us see how do you start with a questionnaire design. <coughs> First specify the information needed, right. Always I tell it to my students and everywhere that whenever you draw, you make a questionnaire before you give it to the final respondent, please write your objective of the study at the beginning of each page, I am repeating this, each page. So, write the objective right here. So, this is my objective let us say, okay. suppose you have turned the page, you have this is page 1, you go on to page 2, please again write it. Why am I saying this? Because it will always keep you on track. If you do not do that, and in the uh, you know uh, uh, you can say laziness or something you do not want to go back and look at it then in the process because you get uh, highly involved in the making the questionnaire there is a probability there is a chance that you might get diverse you know uh, uh, diverted from the objective ok. What is the type of interviewing method? How do you want to uh, get a, uh, what kind of interview you want to do? How do you want to collect your data is an important part. Do, is it like a telephonic interview? Do you want to do one to one personal? Do you want to send it through mail? How do you want to do it? Everything uh, with every uh, different mode it varies. Determine the content of the individual questions. So, what is the content? So, when we uh, or we in the last session we discussed about uh, items. So, what is the item uh, that is going to be here right each question is an, like an item. Design the question to overcome the respondents inability and unwillingness to answer. So, you should be you should be designing it in a way that the respondents inability and unwillingness to answer should be not be there right. What is the structure? Now, the structure could be like it could be very lengthy, it should be it could be disguised, it could be straight away you know open. So, how do you want to keep it structure? We will see each one of them. The question wording. Now, please, please, please do not ever try to show your English or your language uh, you know uh, uh, your ability to um, speak good words or something on a questionnaire. A questionnaire has to be is meant to be very simple and it should only meet the objectives that is all right ordering. We cannot uh, keep a man's uh, head uh, on his stomach and stomach on his head right, we cannot replace that way. If you do it then you can understand what will happen right, God has made it in a way that it is in a logical flow right, so be in a questionnaire. So, the layout how do you want to keep the layout and then you make the uh, questionnaire, you have large number of maybe you print it or do something right. So, let us see with the start uh, the, with the basic ensure that the information uh, the specify the information needed. Now, information obtained the fully uh, uh, addresses all the components of the problem it says right. So, review the components of the problems and the approach particularly the research questions the hypothesis and the specify a uh, specification of information needed. So, what is that I need first of all the researcher has to start with it. What do I need to understand or what uh, objectives do I need to meet? So, accordingly my questions have to give me those answers right. So, as I said the method, the method influences the design and form of questionnaire is it? Let us see if it is uh, there or not. Now, for example, now if you suppose ask somebody ki there are number of stores and please rank these stores. Okay. Now, suppose he says uh, this is 1 okay. and out of the 2 and 10, now he finds suppose this one is let us say 
or uh, this one is let us say uh, 2. Okay. So, then again he has to make an iteration among the remaining 8 items ki which is going to be the third. So, third suppose he says this is the third and then the remaining 7 he again makes an iteration to which is the uh, top among them. So, that is the fourth. So, while doing it, it is only possible when the questionnaire is in front of you. Right. That is not possible if you ask a question on a telephone. Right. So, the person cannot remember, you do not expect him to remember so much. So, mail or electronic questionnaires are basically or personally when you are giving somebody uh, even a personal uh, questionnaire format that is also you can use. Now, electronic questionnaire you see the questions for email and internet questionnaires are very similar. Right, this is the question is self administered by the respondent. That means the respondent, like a personal question, you know, uh, one, one to one basis when you do it. Similarly, uh, here the respondent has his own time and space and he can do it whenever he feels like. Right. Telephonic questionnaire, on the other hand, is something like generally we get uh, calls from different uh, you know um, uh, call centers and all sir we want to know about your opinion about our product how happy are you about our product and all so they ask us in a scale on a particular uh, let's say either company brand or a particular uh, uh, attribute let's say uh, how uh, happy are you with the service of our uh, let's say the connectivity of our uh, let's say um, uh, uh, you know the mobile connection let us say or let us say how good uh, how happy are you with the pricing mechanism or how happy are you with the let us say uh, the uh, offers that we provide right. So, you basically say only you have to say a number right. Uh, maybe for the first question 5, so for the second question maybe 7, for the third question maybe it is 1. So, it uh, that is why it is you do not have to remember only one question at a time. Personal questionnaires can be done for both in fact. So, you can do this way for a kind of a ranking or you can also do like you did it here. So, personal has the biggest advantage uh, it has the most flexible one right. The, why I am saying the most flexible because although the mail looks similar to it, but the mail has one disadvantage that you are not there uh, which is possible in a personal uh, you know uh, collection method because your presence uh, the researcher's presence uh, in front of the respondent helps him to sometimes explain the process or the meaning of the question. Okay. Determine the individual co uh, question content. Okay. So, please here there are some things like uh, do not ask un, uh, uh, ambiguous questions, right? the question should be unambiguous. First of all, find out is the question necessary. Now, there are sometimes people ask double barrel questions like is it hot and tasty, is it cold and tasty, is it good and uh, you know productive. Now, these are two different things being asked at the same in the same question. If the respondent wants to answer, how do you know which one he has answered? Has he answered for hot? Has he answered for tasty? Has he answered for good? Has he answered for productivity? What? So, do not ask such questions please. Now, this is you see the guy uh, says at this point the umbrella was unnecessary. So, why did you have an umbrella? But at least this is at least having there is a rain at the background, but suppose just imagine he had uh, learnt about the forecasting and he has come with the umbrella and he now says there is no rain at all. So, sometimes unnecessary questions should not, so not sometimes every time do not ask unnecessary questions, they should be eliminated. Okay. Are several questions needed instead of one? For example, this is what I was saying double barrel question do you think Coca Cola is a tasty and refreshing soft drink? Now, which is the uh, what is he going to answer tasty or refreshing? So, how is the correct one? Do you think Coca Cola is a tasty soft drink? Plus another question do you think Coca Cola is a refreshing drink? Now, with this there could be a problem. Now, why do researchers do such things? They do it because they want to club it so that the number of questions will get reduced. But, but your your objective is not to only reduce a question. Your objective is to meet with the uh, get the right results. So, to get the right, maybe you have to, if this is such an important question, you might have to skip another question if it is getting too long. But then this is the only way you can do it because if you club it, then it is becoming completely uh, wrong error. Overcoming the inability and unwillingness, respondents, the researcher should not assume that respondents can provide an accurate answer to all questions. Do not please assume this, right. Even the respondent uh, may be able to answer, he or she may not be willing. So, there are two things he might not understand. Suppose you ask a farmer, 
what is his uh, opinion about the farming policies of India or the farming policies of any country. Now, what will he say? Sometimes if he is educated, which is very, very rare, then it is okay. But suppose he is not educated, he does not understand your question, he might not be able to answer, although he is a party who is affected. right? Similarly, unwillingness in case of for example, let us say, uh, you know, cases of very uh, personal matters like sex, for example, uh, you know, use of contraceptives. So, these are questions where people are feeling very uncomfortable, they do not speak up. right? So, questionnaire might not be the right way of collecting the data for such questions and if you want to do it also, there has to be a way, you have to think how to ask the question. right? So, so these are some of the things, let us uh, move. Overcoming the in inability to answer, is the respondent informed, is he, does he uh, uh, know about it? Right. In situations where not all respondents are likely to be informed of the topic of interest, filter questions that measure familiarity and past experience should be asked before opening up the topic. Right. That means, if you are asking the farmer about something, first ask about his response if to the previous thing that has happened in, his, in the past. Right. A do not know ap option appears to be reduced, reduce uninformed uh, responses without reducing the response rate. Suppose you have start, you, you, are, you are going with a question and asking somebody and he says, I have never done it or I have never been a part of it, right. How do I, uh, you know, I do not know anything about it. Then you are visiting the sample or going to the sample that respondent itself becomes a unnecessary task, okay. Now, let us look at this. How many gallons of soft drinks do you consume, did you consume during the last 4 weeks? Do you expect the respondent to remember? If you are thinking, then please this is the biggest mistake, one of the biggest mistakes that we are committing. Do not expect the respondent to remember, do not expect the respondent to understand everything. It is the respondent is like a consumer and the researcher is like a manufacturer. It is the manufacturer who has to or the seller who has to understand the problem of the consumer. The consumer is not bound to understand, right? Rather, you can ask it, how often do you consume soft drinks in a typical week? Less than once a week, one to three times a week, four to… So, here he does not remember. He can give you a much closer answer, okay? Articulation becomes another uh, issue. So, sometimes articulation becomes a problem, for example, for children's for less educated people, there uh, even if you remember I had asked about, I had spoken about continuous scale. So, where we are asking you, giving them a length and they are saying for example, this is the entire length from very large to very low or something, where do you feel it should lie? Now, in a diagrammatic representation, it is very easy to say somewhere here or somewhere here. So, when you do this, automatically it becomes easier. So, respondents should be given aids such as pictures, smileys for example, maps descriptions to help the articulate the responses. Okay. Sometimes they are unwilling as I had said earlier, right? So, it, because too much effort is required or they might not like, the situation or context may not seem appropriate for disclosure, no legitimate purpose or need for the information requested is apparent or the information request is sensitive. So, in such cases respondents have to think of, uh, researchers have to think of another way, some other way of collecting the information. right? Now, overcoming you see unwillingness. Now, please list all the departments from which you purchased merchandise on your most recent shopping trip to a department store. Now, here the respondent might not be willing to answer right? because you have asked him a very big question. Rather, now let us change the question what you are saying for women's dresses where did you go, for men's apparel where did you go, children's apparel where did you go cosmetics, where did you go? Okay. Now, this is rather little simpler, right? he can at least or she can at least answer you because you have not asked him at one go, it, here you are expecting him to or her to write down all the things. right? Inappropriate questions also they are unwilling to answer, the respondent might, might not like. So, the researcher should manipulate the context so the request for information seems appropriate. See, this is but completely an art. Now, this is what this part this is. Now, sometimes the researcher needs to address the same thing in a manner which looks more interesting, easy and the respondents willingness to be a part of it increases. right? And how you have to do it? 
that is why I said in the beginning of the session that I sometimes take 17, uh, I took 17 times to make a questionnaire in one of the cases. So, there must be a pretty reason, it is not that I do not understand the question, but whether my question is justified is uh, right for that respondent that has to be seen. Okay. Explaining why the data are needed can make the request for the information seem legitimate for example. So, if you say that this information is will be used for let us say improvement of women's uh, let us say some ins, uh, sensitive information to women's health for the uh, reducing the uh, child care uh, mortality, uh, child mortality, mother's mortality and all this right. Then maybe people will be more interested to answer you they would show their willingness. Now, let us look at uh, how, uh, how to improve the willingness of the respondents. This is one thing which is very important right ask the question in a third person technique. So, what happens if you remember the projective techniques which I have explained earlier, if you ask in a third person uh, kind then what happens is the person it becomes easier for the person to explain and because he does not feel that it is for him right. So, in such a condition uh, when he, uh, he gives a very uh, correct reply to you right, but that is actually nothing but his own motivation and beliefs. Hide the question in a group of other questions, sometimes you have to disguise the question in a in a uh, in other in the group so that the respondents uh, does not uh, uh, you know uh, find it so uh, uh, starkly different or you can say you know he doesn't feel it difficult to answer so he gets conf maybe you have to sometimes i will use a word it is a way of confusing the respondent that the answer that I want from a particular question that is al although I am not deleting it, I am mixing it with something else where he does not understand ki really that he is being asked what exactly is being asked. Okay. So, these are techniques being used, these are called disguised techniques, right. Provide response categories rather than asking for specific figures, do not ask specific figures, this will be very difficult for a respondent, rather give it a category, for example, a scale, for example, a class interval or something, right. Uh, in a range for uh, let us say uh, let us say 20 to 30 age group for example, uh, 30 to 40, 31 to 40, 41 to 50. So, such whatever you when you give a interval it becomes simpler. Okay. Structure of the questions as I was always saying multiple choice questions right or if you are using dichotomous questions you have to you have to see what is the structure of the question some many cases as i had uh, uh, also said earlier categorical questions or dichotomous questions are very difficult uh, have a very less interpretation power although they have it it's not it is not there but uh, multiple choice questions the response alternatives are included so the set of all possible choice and so that the person it becomes easier for him to choose one of those uh, you know alternatives so, these are some of the techniques which are used in response alternatives are uh, the alternatives are numerous considering uh, consider using more than one question to reduce. Now, for example, uh, let us say if you have uh, a large number of questions which you can ask right and they need only one kind of a uh, scale let us say. So, what you can do is you can club them together bring all of them together at one point and do not ask them independently as different questions. So, that also reduces the you know the uh, the uh, unnecessarily the pain on the respondent right. Now, this is a question which says do you intend to buy a new car within the next 6 months? What is your profession? What is your favorite political figure? Now, when I am saying this is an open ended question right open ended question have their own value they are uh, the unstructured questions and they have their own value because many a times in researchers we are not able to exactly understand or get uh, answer to some of the questions. So, in those questions, those uh, conditions we can use an open uh, you know uh, ended question right. Others are all close ended the multiple choice dichotomous they are all multiple choice or you know open, uh, close ended, but these are all this is a uh, open ended question right. So, the writer is free to write his opinion. So, these are a structured question. Uh, this is a structured question which says it specifies the set of response alternatives and the response format a structure may be multiple choice just I told you dichotomous or a scale right. Multiple choice this is an example right definitely I will not buy def probably will not buy undecided probably will buy definitely will buy for example right dichotomous yes no 
will you buy, will, uh, do you intend to buy a new car in the next 6 months yes no don't know for example so dichotomous is basically two yes or no it's not uh, the third also it is like yes or no right don't know is to not to be kept here we should remove it right yes or no basically question wording is as i said these are the, some of the things you have to remember ordinary words let's see some right now, uh, define the issue in terms of who, what, where, when, why and the way, right. So, which brand of shampoo do you use is more difficult rather the person can be asked which brands of shampoo have you personally used at home during the last month. Now, this is more simpler because the person can exactly say what he has been uh, having at home, right. So, these are some of the things the respondent, the brand of shampoo, what the brand of shampoo, when unclear so that was unclear right so the time frame is not specified in that question so that was the mistake see this time frame was not uh, explained right so where at home at the gym on the road on the road nobody really takes uh, uses shampoo but on the gym at least or on the in the home or somewhere similarly use this uh, look at this do you think the distribution of soft drinks is adequate or now, let us look at this question. Do you think soft drinks are readily available when you want to buy them? Now, in some people might not understand this meaning because people who's uh, this is not a wrong question as such, but sometimes it becomes difficult. So, use only simple words. Do you think soft drinks are readily available when you want to buy them? Simple, right? In a typical month, how many, how often do you shop? Now, never, occasionally, sometimes. Now, why it is incorrect? It is incorrect because what is sometimes what is occasion to you might be a regularity for me. It is a it is a way of understanding, it is a relative thing, right. So, it is better to ask it through a number once, one or two times, three or four times, more than four times. Okay. Now, this is a leading question. Please avoid leading questions. Now, what is saying? Patriotic Americans should buy imported automobiles. Do you think? patriotic Americans should buy imported automobiles when that would put American labor already you have given your bias already you have given your bias here. So, instead of that do you think that Americans should buy imported automobiles that is all right. Implicit questions are you in favor of a balanced budget who does not like a balanced budget. So, the question is are you in favor of a balanced budget if it would still result in an increase in the personal income tax. So, the question is if it still increases in income tax would you still go for it. Order of the questions are also important as I said if suppose some are very difficult you can hide it hide them in between somewhere right start with always easier questions basic questions and keep the complicated at the end right. And also please this is also important that you should know how to branch the questions. So, sometimes some questions would have a sub, uh, sub part of it. So, you need to be very careful in addressing that also. So, interesting simple and non-threatening the order right type of information the basic information should be obtained first followed by the classification and finally, identification information. So, that means what what it is saying is the basic information that you require about the study or your objective of the research should be asked first okay. and finally, you can go to progress to the till the end. Difficult questions which are sensitive embarrassing complex should be always placed in the last in the sequence. Okay. This is like a funnel approach right general questions should precede the specific questions. So, funnel approach it is like the basic questions that I just said beforehand also right. What considerations are important to you in selecting a department store what will you answer in a selecting a department store how important is one of the thing let us say convenience of location ok. Logical order as I gave you the example of our own human body right. The question being branched sometimes should be placed as close as to the as possible to the question causing the branch. Suppose there is a sub part, so the main it should be close to the main question, right. The branching question should be ordered so that the respondents cannot anticipate what additional information will be required. So, the question for form uh, layout is also important because many a times I have seen, uh, especially in very uh, large questionnaires. 
respondents are not willing to answer and that is not exactly the respondents mistake, but the researchers mistake because the researcher should be able to divide the topic in such a manner that let us say in parts for example, part A, part B, part C so that and it should be uh, exclusive in nature right they should be as exclusive as possible. So, what happens is the respondent can maybe fill in part A and then uh, later on come back to part B and part C right. <coughs> well, let us see uh, this is the last uh, so the divide the question into several parts which I just said right. So, each part should be numbered when particularly when the branching questions are used. This questionnaire should be pre coded. Now, what do I mean by pre coded means suppose you have given male as 1 or two, uh, female as 2 or something. So, these things should be pre coded because at the end when you are fitting in this data to the uh, you know some excel sheet or somewhere it should be easy right and to understand and uh, put it uh, somewhere. The questions themselves should be numbered serially right. Now, this is a uh, last we will take as a case what is happening here is for example, these are something this is given to you. Please ignore the numbers alongside the answers. They are only to help us in data processing. A confidential survey of our subscribers of an uh, the, the American lawyer, right? Now, do you spend reading or looking through a typical issue of the American lawyer? This is a this is like a you know uh, journal, right? So, how much time are they taking? So, everything has been coded. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, this is how one goes this is an example it says right less than 30 minutes is 1, 30 to 30, 15 minutes is 2, 1 hour to 29 minutes, 1 hour to 1 hour 29 minutes is 3 it goes on ok. Reproducing the questionnaire means finally, uh, how do you place now that is also important because you see many a times students at the end of the day or uh, the researcher at the end of the day they uh, get confused by the own questionnaires. So, for example, uh, you should have a professional appearance booklet format should be used for long questionnaires is a booklet format should be there it is not key you place it in any way you like and there should be proper uh, spacing right. Whenever as I said here right whenever you have large number of questions which are similar responses have space so you should be grid form should be there right and do not the tendency to crowd questions should be avoided right. So, these are some of the things that uh, one does. And finally, this is the last I hope this is the last slide uh, or maybe maximum one slide is there pre testing. In pre testing what we do is basically we try to uh, test the study before we go for a final major uh, break uh, you know study that means, we are trying to uh, make a pilot test. So, that uh, the pilot test gives us uh, an idea about what are the mistakes we are committing or there is a potential mistake that we can commit. So, in the pre-testing it helps to uh, test the question on a smaller sample group right and it uh, basically takes care of everything it uh, does everything that you do in a like a prototype it is a prototype right. So, and you when you find the mistakes you try to avoid these mistakes for the final one. So, all the necessary changes are made variety of interviews uh, interviewers are used for the pretest right it is a very small sample size is taken right so these are some of the things that you do but uh, never avoid a pretesting or a pilot testing because if you avoid a pilot testing then uh, it will be like uh, you know uh, uh, something like you are going unprepared and uh, finally at the end of the moment when the final stage is on there you see the mistakes and that uh, looks uh, highly horrible and very bad. Thank you so much.